Hello, this is uh, Tony Linford back again. Uh, just a very short video this time. Bit of a plug for a book that I'm reading called um, Kissing Fish, Christianity for People Who Don't Like Christianity by Roger Walsley. Uh, I won't show too much of the book in case for some reason that's against YouTube's policy. Um, what I wanted to do this, on this video was just to start by reading a chapter he has describing conservative Christianity. It's just a few words from that, because I think that kind of states the, the very thing that I dislike about Christianity. And the also lays, on, lays here the foundations for his idea that we can have a liberal Christianity as well, not just a conservative one. So just forgive the side of my face for a moment, if you will, please. I'll just read this half a page or so. Conservative Christianity asserts that, unlike other religions, the Christian God provided unique knowledge about himself for people, knowledge that can only be found in the unique revelation of the Bible. In my opinion, besides arrogantly asserting that God didn't speak through other texts of other major, major religions, this viewpoint denies the, denies the messy variety and inconsistencies in much of that biblical revelation. Again, there is no one consistent presentation of God in the Bible. As I see it, the God of many conservative Christians embraces a one far similar to the anthropomorphized ancient Greek God of Zeus, or even the angry volcano God, and the more mysterious than the more mysterious and compassionate God of those in whom we move and have our being. And he references the book of Acts, chapter 17, uh, chapter 17, verse 8. Christians who seem to support the view of God as a stoic, independent, sovereign, majestic, Spartan-esque, retributive, if we can get the use of that word, retributive, kick-ass king, Using certain patches, certain patches of script, using certain passages of scripture that they read literally. That book is worth reading. It's worth reading because you've only got to um, consult various internet forums, as I often do, and you'll come across so many Christians now who are really pushing that kick-ass version of Christianity. They're really pushing the idea that um, humanity is uniquely sinful, always fallen, has no genuine even right to or potential for salvation in our own right. We are so sinful, we are so awful, really, you know, God is doing us a favour by saving us in Jesus. What I so hate about that whole perspective, and you get it not only on the internet forums, but you get it in churches as well, is this idea that there could exist nowhere in mankind a sort of initial, I believe Wesley called it, a previent grace. Some kind of little bit of the divine image left in everybody that made it possible for God to not only want to save us, but for God to want to love us and be alongside us and struggle with us and reach us in our humanity and reach us through his compassion that we might show compassion to others. The kick-ass fundamentalist Christianity ignores that completely. It has absolutely nothing to do with it. And the author goes on to make a very good point, and if you read the book, you'll see, but I just, I'll just summarise it myself. It's based on the Augustinian view of what's called original sin. Now, OK, probably not the world's most interesting person, St Augustine, for me to be telling you about. So let's just, let's just skip to the chase here and, and say pretty much what I can as briefly as possible about Augustine. Augustine introduces the doctrine of original sin. You can read Genesis and you can see it all there as well. But Augustine believes that we are created sinful, we will forever be sinful, 
even when we left our mother's womb, we were sinful, and we are, pardon me, rotten to the core. Let's be blunt. We're absolutely rotten to the core. Now, you have to understand that Augustine was one of the central founding figures of the church. Yes, it's Jesus' church. He found it. Founded it. I agree, it's Christianity after all. It belongs to Jesus. But Augustine was a major mover in the early Christian movement, a major formator of doctrine. Tell me any theology student from any theological college anywhere that hasn't read the works of Augustine. Ask your vicar if they've read the works of Augustine. They must have read something on Augustine and they will have read about this idea of original sin. However, there was a different person available near to the beginning of Christian history. And he was called Pelagius. And as the guy says in the book here, Pelagius has quite a different view. He did not believe in original sin. He believed in that element of the divine still within all of us that made God save us and want us and need us. Pelagius explores the idea, and this can be found in the Bible as well, that God needs humanity. Not just humanity needs God, not just that, that we prostrate ourselves constantly before God and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness and talk about how awful the world is, but that God Whoever he may be, however you may choose to conceive of him, that's up to you. Okay? But God wants this relationship with us. And he wants this relationship with us. And so, I think C.S. Lewis puts it really well. God woos us into a relationship back with him. Lewis says very well indeed that God does not ravish, he woos. What a fantastic thought that the creator of the universe wants to woo us into a relationship with him. Now, OK, all well and good. That sounds great spiritually, theologically and all that lot. I could I've talked about this for about eight minutes in case you're getting bored. I could probably manage about another 15 minutes on the theory of it. And all. What would that achieve? Very, very little. Let me just say that God commands us, wants us, to go out into the world to serve others physically, socially, mentally. He wants us to look at them as human beings and offer to them compassion. And whoever's doing that is, in a sense, doing that in his name. You know, when you do such and such, when you give them a drink of water or whatever... You give that drink of water in my name. That's the God I believe in. I am happy to champion. That is the God whom I worship. That is the God who I will happily say I see as a Christian God. I don't go to church much, as you all know. And one of the reasons I don't do it is because of the kind of Christian religious bigots I seem to enter an uh, encounter on internet forums, one of the kick-ass God types, because I don't really like kick-ass God types, and I think I would just tell them my view. Anyway, thanks for listening. It's been less than nine minutes, so if this makes it onto YouTube, I hope you enjoy it. If you want to post any comments, go right ahead.